Good time management is so important for students right now because with online school, it is so incredibly easy to get distracted and to be very inefficient with your time, which means what could just take a few hours ends up taking your entire day. Now, the way that I think about time management is not in the sense of getting as much done in a day as you can. That's how some people view time management. The way that I view it is about being as efficient with your time as possible so that you can do everything that you want to do. I think that viewing time management in this way allows you to pursue the activities which make you happy and bring you fulfillment while still getting the things that you need to do, like schoolwork, homework, classes, etc., done. And so I want to be really clear about this from the start of the video. My strategies for time management are not about cramming as much into one day as possible. They're about expanding the amount of time that you have to pursue fulfillment and to become happy. Now, there are three systems that I'm going to talk about in this video, and they kind of go from a broad scope to a very narrow scope. So from long-term planning to short-term planning. And I've developed these over a few years. I've in fact turned one of these into a product. Um, and they've worked really well for me and that has translated into online school. So my hope in sharing this video with you is that I'm able to share a few strategies that might be able to translate to you being able to pursue fulfillment, find balance in your life if you're feeling like you're lacking that right now. So for long-term planning, I love Google Calendar. I use it for recurring events that I know are going to be happening every week or every month. Things like classes, for example. At the beginning of a semester, I will toss all of my classes into Google Calendar. And then for one-off events, things like meetings or deadlines, I also put them in Google Calendar as soon as I have uh, a static date for them, a set date where I know that I have to do something at this time. Now, I'm really careful with Google Calendar though that I don't fall into the trap of filling up my days entirely. I think that when you clutter your Google Calendar in this way, it begins to lose a lot of its purpose. I think that a major purpose of Google Calendar for me in my paradigm of planning and time management is to identify gaps in my days. So if I have recurring events that I've committed to, classes, for example, I can see, okay, I've got two hours there that I can do something. That, that something might be work, it might be homework, or it might be something that I'm doing to pursue fulfillment, right? It might be reading, it might be exercising. But Google Calendar for me is about identifying gaps and protecting those gaps. So really what I'm scheduling with Google Calendar are the things that I have to do at a certain time and nothing more. I'm not scheduling in, okay, this period is when I'm going to be doing homework, this period is when I'm going to be doing uh, you know, exercise, etc. I have another system for that. So a little bit of backstory for this. When I arrived at Harvard, I was having a hard time balancing everything. I'd committed to classes, I was really diving into them, extracurriculars, and obviously freshman fall, I wanted to have a social life. And you know, with that, I really need sleep, I really need to make sure that I'm eating meals. There's just a lot to balance, and I knew that I needed a good daily planning system. And so what I did is I started to experiment with a bunch of other people's systems. And I just iterated and I figured out what worked for me. And I landed on a system that involves time blocking and that involves uh, short to-do lists and goals, as well as some motivation and a happiness reflection. That is the essence of my daily planning. And I turned it into a notebook. The way that I plan my days, the way that I use my growth book is as follows. The, the night before a day, I will sit down and I'll look at my Google calendar and I'll see what I've committed to and where the gaps are. And at the same time, I'll be thinking about what my goals are for the day. Now I'm careful not to do this too far in advance. I do it the night before, because really I think these goals change a lot based on where my head is at. It's not really something where it's like a month in advance. I know, okay, I wanna be reading this much today, or I wanna be getting a coffee with a friend. I think it's important to treat this as an introspective process where in the moment you're saying, what is it that I need? Like, what is it that I want to do? And so that might be, you know what, I need some more quiet time, I need to read. Or it might be, 
I've been spending a lot of time alone. I need to talk to people. I need to, you know, have exercise and fill up my social battery. So I think it's really important to, to set these goals in the moment and to really reflect on what it is that you're setting. And so I'll create these goals. I'll, I'll, I'll write a few out uh, and then I'll, I'll fill in my day where I'll start kind of when I'm waking up and I'll write in the things that I have to do for my Google Calendar and identifying the gaps in my Google Calendar, I'll then fill in based on my goals. Now, obviously there's also things that you have to do during a day that might not be tied to your goals directly, but are flexible events. So things like homework. Now this is what I put under my to-do. So if I have like a homework thing that I have to do or if I have like emails that I have to reply to, this goes in to-do and I again find some gaps in the day where I can schedule that activity in. So I think this is a really powerful way of setting up a day and planning a day because it allows you to achieve some daily goals, pursue fulfillment while still getting everything that you need to do done. So the other two sections, there's a motivation section and a happiness section. Now the motivation section I fill out to remind myself of kind of the bigger picture, right? Like why am I doing what I'm doing? What is it that I'm actually prioritizing right now? Uh, and that allows me to see things in a bit of a different light sometimes. So if I'm motivated by things outside of school, why would I worry so much about school, for example, or vice versa? And the happiness thing is something that I've taken from happiness journaling. It's a reflection. At the end of the day, once everything is done, I've gone through the day, I've, I've got my to-do or my goals, and, and I've gone through my schedule, and I think, okay, what is it today that made me happy? What is one event, one thing that just, you know, made my life a little bit brighter? And I think it's just good for me because I tend to be someone that fixates on negative things a little bit uh, and fixating on something happy at the end of the day. It's just a nice reminder that life is pretty good. The third and the final system is kind of the most zoomed in system of time management. I actually tend to refer to it as attention management more than anything. But it's ensuring that once I've set these time blocks during the day, for example, do homework from noon to 1 p.m., that I actually get my work done in that hour. And for me, there's a couple systems which I use for this. So one is managing my attention in the sense that I turn off notifications and I put myself into as much of a distraction-free environment as possible. But the, the core of attention management for me is when I've set time blocks like this to manage my time within them using the Pomodoro method. I think this is like the biggest hack for your brain if you're studying for a certain amount of time. Uh, and it's so simple. Basically the Pomodoro method is you work for 25 minutes and then you rest for five minutes and then you repeat that over and over again. There's different variations on this. Some people work for 55, rest for five, etc. I think 25, five is the best for me. So what I'll do is I'll put my phone in airplane mode. I will set a timer for 25 minutes and then I'll just work. And then when the timer goes off, I'll take it out of airplane mode, catch up, you know, go to the bathroom, get a drink of water. And then I'll set a timer for five minutes at the start of this. And when that goes off, I'll head back to work and rinse and repeat. It's such an efficient way of managing your time and your attention within this one of these time blocks because you always know when you're working that you have a break coming up. And so you're able to kind of be very efficient in these 25 minute blocks and know that you're getting a reset coming soon. And those resets allow you to kind of figure out where you are, if what you're doing is the right thing to be doing right now. And I think it's just a very, very efficient method of using your time. I'd now like to thank Trends for sponsoring this video. Trends is a knowledge hub from The Hustle, built for entrepreneurs, investors, and generally ambitious people. Trends brings together important information with a great network of like-minded individuals to help give you ideas and help get those ideas get off the ground. My favorite feature on the platform is Signals. Signals is a collection of articles, each of which is centered around one trend or signal. For example, you can see things like the search interest history of Dalgona coffee, if you remember when that was going crazy, and read analysis about how that might evolve. I think it's really cool. I also love the community aspect. Trends has an amazing network of ambitious, like-minded people who are willing to help. I think it's really cool. Right now, you can get your first two weeks for just $1 if you go to trends.co slash johnfish. That's trends.co slash johnfish for your two-week $1 trial. Thanks so much for watching.
Be good out there. Peace.